introductory video to a uh, project car we've got here at LOJ. Uh, this is one of my toys. It's a 2004 Infiniti FX SUV. Um, it started life as an FX45. Um, I purchased this truck, car, SUV, whatever you want to call it, uh, straight out of a junkyard. Um, didn't run, didn't even have keys for it. Um, honestly, don't know how many miles are on it. Uh, the cluster didn't work when we got it, so I put a different cluster in it. Um, and I bought it specifically for the purposes of seeing um, how an LS swap would fit in one of these things. We had a lot of people uh, requesting swap kits for FX SUVs. Uh, strangely enough, I didn't really even realize there was much of a market out there, and that's probably my fault for not knowing the markets that well. But um, I decided, you know, I've got a lot of people asking for these things. So first I did some research um, on the Infiniti FX 35s because I knew they were a VQ 35 powered platform and started looking at the factory part numbers for a lot of the components in those SUVs versus what you would find like in a G35 sedan or coupe. And there was a lot of part commonalities when it came to like motor mounts and oil pans and things of that nature. So I was like, you know what? I'm willing to bet that a lot of our swap kit parts that we offer for the G35 might just fit an FX right out of the box. So uh, started looking around for the cheapest FX I could find. This one popped up on Craigslist. Um, got it super cheap. Um, it's called the Silver Bullet because it's silver and there is a bullet hole in the driver's side door in the back. And we found the slug. It's like a nine millimeter. Um, I don't know the complete history of this thing. Um, I probably lived a pretty rough life. Body panels don't all match. Bumpers are beat up. The um, dashboard has the typical FX bubbling. It's nothing really special to look at, I'll be honest with you. But the price was right, and it gave us a platform to mess with and see what we could figure out would work for a swap and an FX. So um, one thing led to another. I bought the parts to convert this um, FX from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive um, because all of our swap kits are rear-wheel drive swap kits so we did a we pulled the uh, VK engine out um, and installed a rear-wheel drive front cross member and rear-wheel drive front wheel bearings which essentially are the only differences between an all-wheel drive FX and a rear-wheel drive FX and once we got those parts installed uh, I went to the junkyard and got a used six liter iron block ly6 engine which is like a standard issue motor in the gm 2500 and 3500 gas pickup trucks from 2007 and newer uh, it's found in uh, three quarter ton suburbans and a couple other vehicles as well uh, some vans i believe had it pretty robust motor we like them a lot for conversions because first of all they're a six liter Second of all, right from the factory, they've got LS3 rectangle port cylinder heads on them. Same casting numbers as LS3s. The only difference is they don't have hollow stem intake valves like the LS3s do. They have a solid core valve, which is a little heavier. Um, and they have variable valve timing, um, which is really no big deal because if you're doing a cam swap in one of these motors, it's not a whole lot more money to do a VVT delete while you're in there anyway but they don't have displacement on demand or cylinder deactivation, which is a big cost savings. Deleting DOD can be costly because you've got to pull the heads, replace head gaskets, replace all the lifters, replace the valley tray. So that's why we like the LY6s for like a budget entry engine for um, six liter Gen 4s. And we already knew that using Gen 4 engines with our CAN bus translator worked really well to make all the factory gauges work in G35s and 350Zs. So we knew we wanted a Gen 4 motor. So we ended up with an LY6. Now, the FXs are all automatics, and I didn't want to complicate things by trying to do a manual conversion right off the bat. So we actually elected to go with a 6L90 automatic transmission. Now, that was a transmission that was introduced around the same time, 2000, 2007, 2008, in GM um, trucks and cars. It's a six-speed auto, and they actually came in two varieties, 6L80s and 6L90s. And the only difference between them is the torque rating from GM. A 6L90 is a slightly longer transmission. The, um, the overall length of the trans is longer. The gear sets are a little wider, and there's additional clutch packs in 6L90s. 
which uh, is a really nice feature when you want to make big power or you have a heavy vehicle. This 6L90 that's in this um, FX actually came out of a 2013 Chevy Express van. Um, just got to merge onto the highway here. So it's a six-speed automatic transmission. Like I said, it came out of a Chevy Express van. Uh, the 6L90 is the same model automatic trans you would find in a uh, fifth gen Camaro ZL1 that would have an LSA or a Cadillac CTSV that would have an LSA. Um, so yeah, it's the same same trans that's in the vans and is in the cars. The torque converters were different. They were uh, tuned for a different stall. But other than that, it's the same transmission. Um, and so with this, this FX has a 6L90 transmission behind an LY6 engine. So that's what we bought to stick in it to test fitment. And uh, after we got the engine and trans mounted in the vehicle, we were like, all right, what do we do with this thing? It's kind of a quirky vehicle, it's odd looking. What do we do to set it apart from all of the other um, swaps that we've done to draw some attention? And for years, I had been doing a lot of work with Jeremy down at Faster Proms. He'd been tuning a lot of our swaps. And I knew that he did a lot of stuff with Cadillac CTSVs and Camaros. Anything that had an LSA blower on it, he would make tons of power with, um, with some of their ported blowers and cam packages. So I gave him a call and I asked him about um, what an LSA blower would cost for me. Uh, he hooked me up with a great deal. And um, he actually had an LSA blower in stock that was already fully ported. And then he had on the shelf a snout that had been modified to change the belt offset from a standard LSA offset to a Corvette offset so you could drive the blower with the same accessory belt that you would drive um, the accessories with. Which worked out really well because I wanted to try out putting a supercharger on an LS motor using our G35 accessory kit. Which it turns out our G35 accessories are all the same as FX35 accessories. Not FX45, but FX, FX35, and I'm talking early FX35, 2003 to 2008, before they did the refresh in 2009. So I put on our G35 accessory drive package. Since this was originally an FX45, I had to get the G35 power steering pump, alternator, and AC compressor. Also had to get the AC hoses and the rear-wheel drive power steering hose bolted all that on, then got that blower with the offset drive for, had the offset drive for the Corvette accessory package, and we were able to modify our um, G35 accessory kit by simply changing one pulley from a ribbed pulley to a smooth pulley to route the belt around the opposite side, and we're able to get like maximum wrap around the uh, blower pulley which is really important when you run smaller diameter pulleys, which this has like a 2.45 or 2.55 inch pulley on it, I'm going from memory. Um, it's the smallest pulley that you can run once the snout's been modified for this drive offset. And we put a Brian Tooley Stage 3 uh, positive displacement supercharger cam and spring package in it, otherwise the motor's completely stock. And we had the stock 6L90 engine and trans in it, um, I bought, actually I had some later 6 liter 2500 fuel injectors which are, the RPO code for the engine is L96. The only difference between an LY6 and an L96 is that they put bigger injectors on it for flex fuel capability. And I put a set of those injectors on this motor. I decapped the injectors, took something out of uh, Matt Happel's Sloppy Mechanics playbook and decapped those injectors. They flow like 90 pounds once you decap them. And then we took our standard returnless fuel system arrangement and actually converted the stock fuel sending unit to be return style. So um, it has a dash 6 AN feed and then we're using the stock feed hose as the return hose back to the sending unit. It has a single aeromotive 340 liter per hour fuel pump in the tank. On straight 93 octane pump gas, we took this combo to um, a dyno up here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's about three hours away from our shop, but it's a place that Jeremy will come up to and tune from time to time. We brought it out there. He put it on the dyno. And the thing made great power. It made like 620 wheel horsepower at 10 pounds of boost. And um, it's a total ton of fun to drive. Got it to the track, um, went 11.50s at like 130, 125, 130. I'd have
have to put in my old time slips to know exactly. But the thing's a ton of fun and you'd never guess looking at it what, what it has under the hood or what it's capable of. Um, and we kind of left it there for like the first six months to a year that it's been together, probably about six months. And through the experience of driving it, there was a few things that I wanted to change. Um, when we originally built it, I had put a, a Tomei clutch type limited slip differential in it for a G35 350Z application. It actually fit in the R200 diff that came in a v, uh, VK45 powered FX SUV right off the bat. Um, but I really didn't like the amount of lockup. It was really harsh driving on the street. This this thing has 295 street tires at all four corners on 21 by 10 and a half wheels. And it's got Akimoto brakes in the front, a couple other small things, um, BC racing coilovers to lower it. And it's got our true full dual exhaust system and long two headers on it. Um, that, that limited slip was pretty harsh. Um, so we pulled it back out of the truck over the winter and restacked the clutch packs to reduce the lockup which made it a heck of a lot better to drive. And then at 620 wheel horsepower, we were really pushing the limits of a single 340 liter per hour fuel pump in the tank. We were seeing fuel pressure drop off as boost came up in the RPM ranges, um, which we, fortunately we had big enough injectors in it to, to deal with that and keep the air fuels lean, but we knew if we wanted to increase the power at all, that was gonna be a big limitation. So we have some plans in the works. Some of the mods we're gonna do in the future are, um, basically putting a booster pump in, not a Kenny Bell booster pump, um, but we're actually gonna try out, MSD just came out with a, a fuel pump voltage booster that's based on manifold boost pressure, and it can boost the voltage to the pump all the way up to 22 volts, which should theoretically increase the fuel pressure or the fuel flow rate from the 340 liter per hour up to like the mid 400s range, um, which should keep us safe at the current power level. And then we're also, um, adding a methanol injection kit from Snow Performance. Um, it's a twin nozzle injection kit. We'll show a video coming up about the whole installation of that setup. And then we're gonna install an overdrive crankshaft pulley, a, a bigger crank pulley. It's 10% larger than stock, which will result in spinning the blower faster and um, should net us maybe another pound, maybe a pound and a half of boost. So we're hoping that with all those bonds together, um, we should be able to get closer to the 700 wheel horsepower number out of this thing, which would be pretty awesome. Um, we're really excited about it. I mean, this thing's heavy. It weighs 4,500 pounds without me in it, and that's verified at Atco Raceway when we ran it um, with the current setup in it. And we're hoping, you know, with the added power, 4,500 pounds is right around what a Cadillac CTSV weighs, a CTSV wagon. And with around the same power, you know, that, that type of power will put a V-Wagon into the tents. So we're hoping that kind of power will put this thing into the tents, which I think would be pretty awesome to have an FX SUV that runs tents on pump gas with meth injection, swapped with a junkyard motor and trans and an LSA blower on it with a cam in it. Um, we'll see what happens. The next video that's coming out will cover the meth injection and the fuel pump voltage booster install. And we might do a second video on crank pulley install and we've also got an FTI high stall converter on the shelf which we might throw in as well. The truck converter that's in it right now is really tight um, which made it very difficult to launch the track so if we have some time we'll throw that converter in it before the dyno as well that way the trans tube can be recalibrated for uh, the change stall speed and the converter but I hope you like this truck. I'm going to try to overlay some footage of the, the truck, whether from at the track or wherever, on top of this uh, video commentary. It's just an introduction. Unfortunately, we didn't start this video series before we built this truck. So I can't show you what this build was from the beginning. But we're going to pick it up from here on out and show you the life of this truck, this SUV, what we do to it um, from here on out, whether it's... Uh, Know, the upcoming meth injection and fuel pump voltage booster or any other suspension brake chassis mods we'll have this thing at ls fest um, probably both ls fest west and east this year if you want to come check it out in our booth it should be a lot of fun um, if we get the opportunity we'll race it as well 
but I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy just an introduction to the background of this thing. There's a lot of, a lot of interesting quirks about this vehicle that are a lot of fun. Still has air conditioning, still has power steering, still has all the factory gauges functioning just like all of the swaps that we do. Um, the thing's a lot of fun, it's a hoot to drive. We've got the tap shift manual mode working with the, the six-speed automatic, so it's not paddles on the steering wheel, but the shifter can actually be bumped into a manual mode to be manually shifted, and uh, the thing's a ton of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely like, subscribe, follow us for more information about this build, for more cool content, and we'll uh, talk to you soon, all right? Thanks.